Hello and welcome back to day 5 of our 90 days data analytics training. I'm super excited to have you back today and I hope you're as excited as I am. Remember to drop any question you have in the comments and you can also join our paid community to for live classes, mentorship, you have direct access to me if you pay for this community and you can ask me any question we can brainstorm together and do all of this catch up together so let's get straight to today's tutorial where we are going to talk about the basic statistics every data analyst should know there are some basic statistics you have to understand to be a great data analyst and that's what i'll be showing you today So first, let's talk about why it is important to learn these statistics as a data analyst. So every data tells a story, we already know that, and statistics will help us hear it clearly, right? And also, this concept will help us summarize, explain, and compare data sets. We'll be using some of these basic statistics in the software tools we'll be working with like Excel, SQL or any other analysis to work with. The first basic statistics we'll talk about is the mean, which is also the average, right? Talking about the mean, the mean is when you sum all the values and you divide it, and you divide it by the number of values. Let me not speak too much grammar. Let me show you a practical aspect of this. In this spreadsheet, in this first column, you can see that I have three numbers, 5, 20, and 40. I said mean is when you calculate the total of everything divided by the number of times they appear. So, for example, mean would be 5 plus 20 plus 40, which would be 65. 65 divided by how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3. So, that would be 65 divided by 3. That is what mean would do. But you know the beauty of learning data analysis? You don't have to do all this calculation yourself. I know you don't like calculation. And that is why we learn the software too. So you don't do the manual calculation yourself. So to get the mean, I can just easily say equals to, then there's a function called average. Don't worry, we have not gotten to the practical aspects yet. I'm just showing you what you can do, an example to explain the mean. So I can easily say equals to average, and I'll just highlight everything here and I'll press enter. Can you see it automatically gave us the mean value? So instead of me saying 5 plus 20 plus 40 divided by 1, 2, 3, that's the answer. And divided by 3, I don't have to do all of that. I can easily just call for a function and it's going to give me the mean value that I'm looking for. Is that not amazing? That's just an explanation on the mean, how to get your mean value. We can get in terms, in the practical world, we may decide to get the mean salary. So let's say we have a company where people are collecting salary, 50K, some people collect 100K, some people collect 150K. We want to know what the average salary for that company is. You can also use this approach to get the average salary for the company. So let's move to the next basic statistics that we need to know as a data analyst. The second one is the median. So median is like the middle value when data is arranged in other, right? And it is used when your data has outliers or extreme value. Don't worry yourself too much. These are the things we are still going to see in the practical phase. I just want you to understand what they mean, all right? So let's go to the practical aspects and see how whether we can get median or we have to do it manually. So let's try to get the median now with just one function. You can just do equals to and then you call for the median function. I like the entire place where you want to get the median for and press the enter key. The middle value in this context is 20. We have 5, 20 and 40. Those are three numbers. So the one in the middle is this 20. If we have four numbers, let's say I added 60 here to this last one and I want to get the median. Let's say we want to get the median for these four numbers. So what it will do is, the two numbers in the middle, because this is even. So what's going to happen is, it's going to take these two numbers, 20 plus 40, and then divide it by 2. 
that's where we have four numbers but when we have like three numbers like five numbers it's just going to take the one at the middle so now 20 plus 40 is 60 divided by 2 is 30 so with just one function we can do all of these things that's what makes it beautiful moving on we have the mode the mode represents the value that appears most frequently so for example let's say we have five five two three you know five is appearing twice two is appearing once three is appearing once i don't want to talk too much let's go to the practical aspect okay so let's say we have five five two three you can see that five is appearing twice one two two is appearing once three is appearing once the mode in this contest is going to be five all right let's try to use some of the functions we talked about mode so i'm going to highlight all of this can you see it gave us five so this function makes life a lot easier for us and we just need to understand how the functions work to be able to do any type of analysis with it and these numbers i showed you here are very small um this is just four numbers when you are working as a data analyst you can work with like 1000 rows this is just four rows you may be working with 4000 rows 5000 rows sometimes 1 million rows and above you understand and that is why we need to understand this function so by then i'm not looking at it one by one to try to do it manually i can just use the function and it's going to just calculate everything automatically so now let's talk about the next basic statistics we need to understand so we have something called the standard deviation and it is a measure of how spread out our value is how it is spread out okay let's take for instance um we have three numbers we have 20 21 and 22 you know that these three numbers are close to each other 20 the difference between 20 and 21 is just one the difference between 21 and 22 is also one you understand so these numbers are close together let's now say another we have another number we have 20 500 and 1000 you know that these numbers the difference between them is very large because 20 500 that's like 480 difference and 500 to 1000 is like 500 difference so that's a lot of distance between them so talking about standard deviation we say the numbers have a high standard deviation when the numbers the difference between the numbers is widely spread out right for the example i did for 20 500 and 1000 that would have a high standard deviation because the difference between the numbers is much right and for the one i said where we have the 20 21 and 22 they will have a low standard deviation because the values will be close to the mean and the values are not really spread out i hope you have an idea of what i'm talking about now right so we also use this in our analysis to make some decisions so when we get to that aspect of our analysis where we need to use it i'm going to refer you back to this video so that you can refresh your memory on standard deviation okay so now um it is also used when we want to measure consistency or variability all right so a real life example is let's say two students score 70 on average right we have students students a score to be 60 70 71 you know this is close together 60 70 71 the number are close uh, they are not really spread out so these numbers will have a low standard deviation but if we have students b score to be 50 70 and 90 then it will have high standard deviation and student a is more consistent with his or her score that's what that means let me show you an example of how we can apply this in our spreadsheet so these are the two numbers i spoke about just now let's try to get the standard deviation for this and also this so i can do equals to standard can you see we have a function called standard deviation already so i'm just going to highlight it can you see it has automatically done it for me i'm just going to press enter you can see the standard deviation for this three number is one now let me get the standard deviation for these other numbers the standard deviation for this other number is 20. so this one because the numbers are close to each other the standard deviation is low why this other one because the numbers are far apart they are spread out we have a high standard deviation for it so now let's proceed 
let's talk about a real life example of using of this main media mode that we just talked about so let's say an e-commerce store analyzed their delivery times right and they realized they got the average for their delivery time they saw that the average is four days that's the mean and they discovered that the median which is the middle value is three days they also realized that the mode, which is the highest, the one with the highest frequency, the most occurring one, is two days. And the standard deviation from their data set is 1.8 days. Now, this is how we can interpret that. We can say, although the average delivery days is four days, right? Most people get it in two to three days. You know, the mode is the highest frequency, right? So they mostly get it within two and the middle one is three. So they mostly get it within two to three days. And the variation is moderate. How did we know that the variation is moderate? The variation is moderate because this standard deviation is similar to what we have between the mode and the median, which is the two to three days. 1.8 is close to two to three days. And that's why we can now say that the variation is moderate. So as a data analyst, that is why we say you have to tell a story with data. You don't just tell your stakeholder that, oh, the mean delivery time is four days, the median is three days, the mode is... No, you don't do that. What you do is give them, tell a story with the data. If you say this, your stakeholder will understand it better than just telling them mean. They are like, what is mean? What is median? I'm not a technical person. I hope you understand this. So let's proceed. Now we are done with some basic statistics we need to understand as a beginner data analyst. I'll link a sample data set in the description of this video that you can check out and practice with. Try out the mean, try out the median, try out the mode. I know I've not explained any of the software tools yet, but relax, we are taking it one step at a time. We don't need to rush. We have about 85 days to go, yeah. All right, we've come to the end of today's class. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. We will talk about understanding business problem as a data analyst. Don't forget to join our paid community for mentorship, to interact with other students, and to understand this better. See you tomorrow and bye.